Hello, everyone. Um, this meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below. And they are. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. And it is September 11th, 2023 and 6.30 p.m. It sure is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see. Call to order. Guidelines for a business meeting. Please speak one at a time. Follow Deerfield Code of Conduct. Be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and recognized by the chair. And identify board members and attendance. Kathy Rachel Sylvester. Sorry. You're muted. Present. Okay. Kathy Watroba. Here. Rachel Bland. Here. Emily Gaylord. Here, Denise Mason here. All right. And I just wanted to take a minute to thank Annalie Wolfkuhl, who is no longer on the planning board. Um, she resigned. She gave us three great years of her time. And she was chair. And I really appreciate all she did because I wasn't ready to be chair. I think that was my name, so not sure if I'm still ready. But anyway, she, you are she did. Ready. She did an amazing amount of work and she was on various committees. So we really do appreciate all that she did. And she's just taking time with her family and they need her. So <laughs> again, thank you, Annalie, for all that you've done. All right, um, we're going to review, I think, review some of the minutes we have. No, I don't, I don't have know any if, of those, yeah. Well, okay. but we have some of them right If here. you've had a chance, I think yes. we have the minutes from 710, 717, 87, 821. And have you all had a chance to review them? You're all all right. Do does anyone have any additions, corrections? Hey, David, we just saw a stunning display of the lot of clouds. That usually means it's one. Of oh, is, is that Stanley? Could you please mute? Right. I'm hearing okay. chattering in the background from someone. If you could put it on mute. Stanley, that may be someone in your household. Okay. All right. Yeah, you should so, be able to uh, go to the bottom, put it on mute. Sorry. Um, I don't know who's talking. At any rate. Okay. So um, I, I, I think they looked good. Okay. I was only at one of those three meetings, but I move that we accept the meetings as present, the uh, meeting notes, minutes as presented. Rachel Blaine. All right. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Yeah. All right. So um, seconded to Emily Gaylord. Okay. So we'll take a vote. And that's um, for all the meetings for 710, 717, 87, and 821. Kathy Sylvester? Um, yes. Okay. Oh, that's easy. Kathy Watroba? Yes. Blaine? Yes. Emily Gaylord? Yes. Denise Mason? Yes. So all those minutes have been approved. We're just waiting okay. for a few others that will, oh, I'm sure, come shortly. Like <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm sitting in a pile. Yeah, well, you know, that's life. Okay. So Thank next you. on the agenda is Chapter 179, Review Public Information Session. And we have the delightful Peggy Sloan with us this evening on Zoom. And she is from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And if you can't see, feel free to move your chair. It's a little awkward. So come sit over here. Just have You're the only one here. Yeah, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be commenting You've anyway. You've many sure, of these so. big meetings. Okay. We have an empty board here. Yeah. All right. So Peggy has, she's been working with us tirelessly on this, has done a terrific job. And um, we do have a PowerPoint presentation that Peggy's going to run. And I'll run through that, through it with everyone. And after that, we'll open it up for questions. Well, at the end. Okay. All right. I started up, Denise? Yep. We're ready. Okay. Let's get 
back. Beginning. Okay. All right. Can everyone see that? Hang on just a second. I'm going to yep. start it from the beginning if I can get. All right. It's all yours, Denise. Thanks. Thanks, Peggy. Okay. As you can see, it's a public information session, September 11th, 2023. And these are the, the goals of our. Whoops. Okay. These are all. Our planning board members, minus Hallie Wolfkohl, who has recently resigned. Okay, and next. Okay, so the goals for our zoning bylaw update is we, you know, and I'm going to read this for people who may not mm -hmm. be able to see the screen, which I don't normally read PowerPoints, but to identify <laughs> to identify and correct inconsistencies. We wanted to update our conservation development bylaw to encourage open space protection, which is really important for the town of Deerfield, and update the floodplain district bylaw to meet the national flood insurance requirements. Next. All right. Um, we updated our official zoning map, which was little difficult to see and understand. So I think, is it Ryan at FERCOG did that? Yeah, he did. He did a great job. It's so much easier to, to look at now. Um, we also updated the definitions and the administration section. Next. Okay. So the highlights of the zoning changes, we updated the floodplain district bylaw to meet the new federal and state requirements to maintain eligibility for national flood insurance program, which is so important as we all know after the storms that we continue to have and flood our wonderful farmland and town in general. So that is a must. We really, we just had to do that. So that's, that's and really roads. important. Okay. Then the next is we updated our conservation district bylaw to increase open space protection requirements and to just require site plan review rather than a special permit. So we've made that a little easier. And it's really important to, you know, to protect our open space requirements, because I think, as Peggy said, at one point, we could have a huge developer come in, buy up a gigantic tract of land and just put all sorts of maybe houses on it, <laughs> maybe something that is not desirable for the town. So it just gives us a little extra insurance. Uh, let's see. We also reorganize. Whoops. Next, we reorganized the sign requirements of Section Forty One Fifty, which is the planned industrial development, into Section Thirty Two Hundred, and that's the signs. And that was just to put all the signs into one place, so it was just easier to read. You know, just really streamline that, that information. And this has been a request. From for many years, yes. this signage clarification has been requested over and over again by many constituents, yep. business owners. And then we added electric electric vehicle EV parking requirements to the parking section because you know as we as you all know, I think a lot of people, maybe not a lot, but a good amount of people are buying electric vehicles and just people visiting. So it's really nice to have. Um, so you can. You know, not get stuck. <laughs> but, um, you know, the town of Deerfield, as I think the state of Massachusetts, we're trying to be we're trying to be net zero by 2030, um, certainly at least by 2050. I don't know. 2030 is not that far away. All right. Next, um, we also changed hotels and commercial recreation from a buy right use to uses requiring a special permit in the tourist Oh, the tourist overlay district. Not too, so that might be something to Peggy. Right. Yeah, I just noticed. Yeah, I'll I'll correct that. Thank Ryan. you. Thank you. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. But yeah, so we did we did change that. Um, and I think that was really important that it was just not by right because once again, then the town would not have the control over, you know, the size of the hotel and you know what type. So um, another change is we changed building inspector to building commissioner because building commissioner, it's it's a lot more involved than just being a building inspector. So that was important to do. And next, 
We added new definition for family and changed multifamily dwelling definition to allow up to four units. Because I'm trying to, th I think it was three before. Yes. Okay. So we added that to four. Which is just the standard right. Massachusetts definition for multifamily. Okay. And then we added new lot width definition and diagrams, which is a lot easier to see because every time we'd have an ANR and it was really difficult to try and measure and understand not just the ANR, but any kind of plot plan. So that was, that was really helpful to do. And that will be, I think on our, no, that's, that'll be in our, our the whole change. Okay. Um, let's see. We also added pharmacies with or without a drive-through window, um, hotels and motels to the use regulation schedule because it, they just weren't on there. So that was something, it, I think it was, they were elsewhere in chapter 149, but that way it's in the use table at this point. And if I'm saying anything that's incorrect, Peggy, please correct me. Well, and also we just wanna say for the informational session that the drive-through window is only added for pharmacies, not any other businesses. That's a particular advantage for elderly folks and families, you know, young children. Right. And families, and especially if you have COVID, you don't have to go into this. Car. Car. You're just yes. Yes. Right. You can just have COVID in your car. Right. Up to date. All right. <laughs> all right. And then um, the updated, the updated the official zoning map to include all the, the overlay districts. And that, that is a work of art. It looks so much better than it did before. So yeah, we've got that there. And we, we will have, well, I mean, we'll have this for the um, for the hearing as well, but I don't know if we'll have you know, a larger blow up at some point. Okay. All right, so the next steps, copy of the proposed zoning bylaw changes are available on the town's website for public comment. Um, we'll incorporate public comments received tonight into the proposed zoning bylaw revisions, and we'll be conducting public hearing process required under MGL Chapter 40A to gather additional public input. And that will be at, that will be at our October 2nd meeting where we do have a public hearing on this. And the zoning revisions will be brought to town meeting for a vote after that, and that will be on October 23rd, 7 p.m. at the high school. So, and we know the zoning bylaw revisions must pass by two thirds vote at town meeting to be adopted. So hopefully we get a good turnout and people approve of all the changes that we made. And so, you know, a lot of them are just organizational changes and there are, are, are some sub substantive changes, but that were really necessary, you know, especially with the um, flood district and then the conservation. So, all right. And at the end, we just have a slide of what's different, you know, from a, a site plan review and a special permit for informational purposes. So if you want to put that slide up and Mr. Cunningham can read to your, I think, is, is that there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, if you want to see the difference. No, he doesn't. Okay. All right. Well, that was... Pretty straightforward. Okay. This might be worth posting on your home now. Mm -hmm. So that if people want to go through it, just see the slide presentation. As long as we clarify questions and comments on that are not public. Right. We can't. And comments, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. That we can't. We wouldn't weigh in at any point. But it's still, I think, informationally speaking, it would be good for people to be more alert to it. I think it will be cut off guard by a few things if yeah. they aren't um, keeping themselves informed. And our you know, public is not clamoring to be here. Um, <laughs> Apparently not. Which, One and, and, and I mean, that's fine. That's fine. But, uh, I know. The important people are here. Yes. That's <laughs> right. um, but yeah. I... I it would be nice. I'm sorry. So are you asking me to put this up on the website? I think the, maybe, the it, maybe just put it on the website and then direct people to the website. That's yeah. okay. that would be the best thing for us to do. Okay. Uh, okay. Our, I can do that. Other, um, uh, other, um, not no. social media. I'm no, sorry. Amy, I'm just going to make that one correction and then I will PDF oh, okay. it and send it to you. Okay. Yeah. And Perfect. I can post it to 
I can post the website URL. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, yeah, that would be great. I think that's just the right thing to do. Okay. I think um, some of these will seem substantive. I think that the floodplain map, everybody's going to have to yes. quick find themselves on that. And I think that um, we've been talking about it for years, but that doesn't mean that people have been hearing it. You know, it's been us here talking about it here and on various um, subcommittees, frankly, it's, we really have been talking for, about it for quite some time, yeah. but that doesn't mean everybody's top of their mind. Um, and so this would put it back into the focus for people who have been thinking about it. Can we put the overlay map up also the like, can we, yeah, that would be great. That, that one, maybe have that someplace and, and put draft, draft, draft proposal, proposal. So right. people understand that it, that's not. Uh, I mean, Peggy, were you talking about that um, we can put the red line version of Chapter 179 up on the website at this point? Yes, I think you can do that. Okay. Um, and I, I think you can put all of the drafts that okay. are red lined yeah. up, yeah. Um, as well as uh, the PDF of the official zoning map, if people want to take a closer look at it, because it's a little hard to see, I think, on the screen. Okay. Um, and can then I'll just make that one correction and you can PDF and put the, I, I can PDF it and you can put the PowerPoint up too. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you say put up all of them, do you mean all the drafts, one, two, three, or you mean the, the basic draft, the 3,800 and the 4,100? Yeah, there were three different um, three, uh, okay. PDFs that were for the public information session. So yep. it was the changes okay. to 179, the floodplain. Yep. yep. And uh, the okay. conservation. Yep. And then so and I'll I'll put them up with the those, red lines. Can, yeah. So that people know what's you. changing. Okay. Yep. Yep. I've got it. I will right. post that. Okay. That's great. Thank, Thank you, you, Amy. Thank you. No, this is this is great. So I think at this point I'll open it up for public comment. And I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. Maybe it'll be a All little right. easier. And we have, please state your name, sir. Uh, John Cunningham. Oh, you got to go real close. Sorry, okay. John Cunningham. Okay. So I want to say that I've listened in on two of the sessions when you were going through the yep. line by line, and it's a very deep dive, very thorough, excellent work. I hope I don't come off like a curmudgeon here, but I thought I'd try to suggest a couple of improvements before the final draft is done. Um, and I have had interactions with note six of the dimensional requirements myself. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to start with that if I could. 23, <laughs> 2379.11, table of dimensional requirements, note six, about lot width. And I see that you've referred to the definition and then deleted the entire previous note six. I'd like to call your attention to the fact that note six had three distinct requirements in it and lot width replaces only one of those three. So I'm suggesting that you put back the part of note six that follows C illustration three in parentheses. That is the 60 degree angle minimum requirement from the frontage of a lot and what to do if a lot expands to districts. I think you should not just delete those and not replace them with anything. So that's my first Can suggestion. Can I just ask you quickly, um, just, when you, you're just really pointing to the third point in note six. Note six, everything following C illustration three, which is in parentheses. Right, everything if after restore that. restore the rest of that text, it restores the 60 degree minimal angle off of frontage. And it tells you what to do if your lot spans two districts. Right. And I think that should remain in note six or become note seven itself. So. Got it. Secondly, mm -hmm. um, where you have the definition of a lot width, at 179.114 in the definitions, the new definition and procedure for doing lot width. Um, first of all, it has. Wait, new, can you? I'm sorry, I'm just following I'm up. So try that again. Yeah. On page 179.114, the definition of lot width, which is referred to in note six, it says see the definition of lot width. So under all the definitions, I'm not following. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Which one? Which, it has which the one? new diagram oh, for how you draw. 
Um, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, okay. That's new right. diagram and yep. new text. Yes. So that replaces the old note six in your work. Um, it has a new concept of lot depth, which wasn't mentioned ever before in these bylaws. Um, and I think that's good. It's helpful to have this line. I would call it a reference line, not an imaginary line, mm -hmm. if it were me. And I would say the reference line within the lot boundaries, because if you have a reference line that can go out of the boundary and come back in as lot depth, I'm not sure what that tells you about the lot's depth. So I would say it's a reference line within the lot boundaries, so on and so forth. I, parenthetically, I did send my comments to the building commissioner this afternoon, so he could oh. think about them or have them. Yeah, good. So That'll I don't know if he agrees easy. or not, but I just want to. Well, make... okay, but you sent all the comments, so I'm okay. Yes, I'll get. Yeah, good. Um, so anyway, I, I think the reference, I mean, the lot depth, you need that to calculate lot width in this method, and so I think you should call it a reference line within the lot boundaries rather than an imaginary line that could extend outside and come back in, I suppose. What it's doing is preventing a flag lot. <laughs> if you can go out and come back in, you can make a flag lot out of many things. And can, you send, excuse me, can you send your comments to the chair of the planning board too, please? Yes. Yes, I sent them to Amy and Bob. Oh, okay. Bob and Bob. Yeah, but, I'm, I'm sorry. I probably should have, Denise. Yeah, I didn't think to forward them to you. I probably should have. I, I apologize. Okay, thanks. I sent them to Bob because I thought he'd be here. I thought he'd be able to comment, but I, I'll send them to you too, Peggy. Okay, yeah. If you can send them to me tomorrow, I mean, that would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so so in any event, the lot depth concept, I think, just needs tightening up with the description of what lot depth is. And I would add, either here or back in the dimensional requirements, the following statement. A lot not satisfying the minimum front angle requirement shall not be conforming for lot width. That goes back to not deleting the front angle requirement in mm -hmm. note six and not having very narrow flag lots. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this, I would add to the lot width description right there, a lot not satisfying the minimum front angle requirement shall not be conforming for lot width. Yeah, that's my suggestion. Yes. Um, and that's what I'd like to point out in terms of uh, the dimensional requirements. I have a few other things, if you don't mind. No, nope, please. Because I was trying ahead. to be thorough, since you folks were very thorough, and, and it's a good time to clean up things. I noticed some other things. I think changing building inspector to building commissioner is necessary, but if I were doing it, I would say change it to building commissioner or their designee. In the future, if the town gets bigger and the assistant building commissioner becomes the inspector, you won't have to go through and change it again. So mm -hmm. I would just change it to building inspect building commissioner or their designee. Except um, in one that I haven't mentioned yet. <laughs> and that would be 3934 accessory apartments. I know it's a new <laughs> thing and I know you may not wish to change anything, but I just want to make a comment. So that's at 179.39 and 179.40, it continues. Two points, if I may, Number the first point is number 12 has a line deleted and it's not complete. So number 12 has lost a line somewhere in the draft that's at least posted for the meeting. So just finding the rest of the sentence and putting it in. Special permit application procedure, that, that one? I'm not sure, it's number 12. 12? I don't have it opened up here. There's no period there, that's all. Oh, I thought it I, It read to me like it was going to have mm -hmm. more information. Building commissioner shall administer and enforce the provisions of this section 3940. Special permit application procedure. Is that the one maybe that you're thinking? Could be. I'd have to look at the... That makes sense. Draft, that makes sense. It, it just seemed like it ended without... Finishing was at, it was at the bottom of the line up there. Yeah. Anyway, it may, it may not be incomplete, but <clears throat> what I primarily like to say is about number five, um, where the front entrance can be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think someone who would cite the First Amendment, freedom of expression, architectural design aspects might be able to make that uh, unenforceable. 
And I would suggest that the character for a, of a single family home should be determined by the building commissioner with appeal to the planning board and not talk about whether the door has to look like the other door or go through the common entrance and all. Because I think, again, freedom of expression of where you put your door and to say that renters should only go to the side of the building and not come to the front, that may give a bad image for the town itself. Mm. So it's just a suggestion that you may or may not wish to deal with. Other than that, one, two other points. In uh, this, the definition of setback comma front at 179.120, it, it used to be setback, but you made it setback comma front, which makes sense because it is about the Oops, sorry, I was front. I missed you again. I'm okay, 179.120, the definition of setback in the definitions, it's alphabetical, so we get down yep. to S. Okay, setback, setback comma, comma front. front. Yep. Perfect. But I think when you read it, it was existing already, you haven't changed, it refers to the street or lot line. And I think you want to refer to the street line or lot line because if you say street or lot line, you can measure from the edge of the road and get an extra 10 feet closer for your setback. So you might have a challenge by somebody who said it said street, 30 feet back from the street. And what you really mean is the street line, which is 10 feet in from the edge of the road. So it's just adding the word street line instead of street. It's been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Maybe nobody's <laughs> tried mm -hmm. to use it to get mm -hmm. their setback mm -hmm. closer, but somebody could. Uh, I may have exhausted my... Can I just ask a qu clarifying question? So when you say street line, are you, are you saying from the street right-of-way edge? That yes. There's a, there's a by the foot, street line? Yeah, there's always a, a 10 or 12 foot somewhere where there's a line where the town owns... So the actual right-of-way line? From the edge of the street. Town on, okay. Mm -hmm. I, should, right. I just know the street line. I yeah. don't know right away. Right. And then your frontage starts from there in. But this allows you to go from the street itself, which gains you 10 or 12 okay. or 15, yeah. depending on where you are in town. So you, it's unintended and it's perhaps trivial, but it's there. Um, and with that, I thank you for allowing me to make comments on this document and I really I support it it's great it's got important things that you've highlighted um but I think you want to just make it as good as you can make it thank great. you great thank, thank you, you. Would, would you mind uh, just writing your name and your address there and we really do appreciate all okay. the time and effort that you put into looking yes. and reading this yes. and yes. attending yes. and coming to meetings yeah oh please okay Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. I thought I left a pen there. Yeah. Now, um, do we have any other public comment? Okay. Perfect. All right. Okay. All right. So let's see. So, Mr. Cunningham, once again, thank you so much, and I'm sure we'll see you at the next meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. So, Peggy, I think we're all set with that, and. Amy will send me all the comments that you made tonight, Mr. Cunningham, you sent to Amy? I did in an email this morning. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And point of clarification, Denise, will the planning board have another meeting before the public hearing so we can discuss some of these suggestions and I can get guidance about which ones you want to incorporate? We don't have one planned at this point, but we can talk about this when you're tomorrow when when you can peggy and we can save okay. the time well we might think about it now peggy's right here well okay let's do it now i mean that not to be because i really and not to add more because that's really what i don't want to do but i think yeah, that I peggy's right and i think i mean these are these are great comments and um we yeah. don't have any others that are coming in yet. and i don't think it would take a lot of time peggy what do you yeah no i'd be happy to go over them now okay. with you and just get feedback okay so, why don't we talk about the first one, which is the footnote number six. Oh, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's fine to add back in the, in case of the lots located in more than one zoning district, the requirements of the more restrictive zoning district shall apply to the entire lot. 
Yeah. Um, the 60 degree, I think you all should discuss that because we put that back in, then it would eliminate the potential for flag lots. And I don't know that we specifically discussed that or not. Right. We, yeah. It would eliminate the potential for a flag lot. I assume so, because if you had a very narrow frontage with 90 kind of degree angles going back in, right. that would sort of describe the configuration of a flag lot, whereas if it was 60 degree, it would be more shallow and it might just be a unusual kind of shaped lot. Right. <laughs> I don't know if the road would bend or exactly what was going on, but. Right. So some towns allow flag lots because it allows for infill development. Yeah. And if there's, you know, enough step back in the main portion of the lot and um, sufficient buffers of the entrance going in. Um, but I don't think we specifically discussed that. So maybe if we go to... Um, the lot frontage definition, that might give us some guidance. Let me just get there. Know which one? <laughs> oh, I'm looking in the right place. I know, guys. Might be old. So actually, the lot line. Um, Front the property line dividing a lot. So that actually has the minimum interior angle of 60 degrees shall separate a front lot line from any other adjoining lot line. So it's in there. Mm -hmm. Lot line front. Oh, this is the one. Hmm. I'm on page 113. Yep. Yeah. Right, right, right. So I don't know if we need it again in the Definition of lot width. It seems more appropriate where it is in the definition in a, of lot line front. So uh, I think we might just need to add the more restrictive zoning district because the 60 degree angle is addressed in the lot line front. So, right, law line front, property line divided in this case, the court line shall separate. And then if you go to frontage, um, let's see, the frontage addresses uh, the fact that it has to have adequate access, um, that lots with interrupted or discontinuous frontage must demonstrate that the required length along the street may be obtained from one continuous frontage section without any totaling of discontinuous frontage section. So that makes sure ensures that there's a, a continuous lot frontage. So I think perhaps those two um, address that concern about removing stick. Because in fact, it's included in the definition of yeah. lot line front. Which makes sense because this, the new six is the definition of lot width, not lot frontage. <laughs> so are folks okay? I think, I think so. All right, so I'm just gonna add back in the minute the, uh, in the case of lots located in more than one zoning district, the requirements of the more restrictive zoning district shall apply to the entire lot. Okay. I'm going to add that back into six. Yes? What, what is your concern, Mr. Cunningham? That it's less clear? Because it seems to me that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I realized realize that it was in the definition, yeah. but you're intentionally removing it from the dimensional requirements. So you're saying it exists, but you don't want to tell somebody in the dimensional requirements of its existence. 
the 60 degree angle is there, it will be enforced, but it'll surprise somebody who was looking mm-hmm. at your dimensional requirements and you didn't state it. Mm-hmm. I agree, it should be a footnote to something else than the width. It should be a footnote to the lot size at the top, yeah. footnote six or so. So we could, we could make it, we could make it seven and, say, and refer it to the top or refer it, see illustration. And then the C like, definition. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that we're trying to do is clean this up so we yeah. don't, because what we our fear is, and, and our intention was to clean up the definitions and yes. push everything there, you know, not to surprise anybody, but to say right. that's where it is. Because if we change right. it here, just so we don't you, change it there. That's when a lot of a, a confusion has actually occurred. Right. At least so, give but an idea defi- of where to look for Right, exactly. So it noting is, where to look. Yes, yeah, it, it is makes de facto in effect. And so whether right. you want to take it out of that footnote it's still or, de facto in effect but or make a reference to yeah. the make a reference to the sure. definition, yeah, definition i just think table. you want to tell somebody that right. that exists. see definition table yeah thank you okay. thank you all right so we'll put that in uh footnote number seven mm-hmm. okay. okay all right And I'm happy to add building commissioner or their designee. That's okay with. That's fine. No, that's that's fine good. Thank yeah. Gordon. Okay. Thinking ahead. <laughs> Bob, Bob would love a designee <laughs> at this point. <laughs> no, that, that he had a designee. A designee. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then accessory apartment. Uh, I'll double check, but I don't think language is missing. I think it was just the period. Period. But, Okay. Um, uh, do you folks want to remove this restriction of having the um, accessory apartment entrance be to the rear or side and just allow it? Well, <clears throat> it's rear or side or front entrance with two combined. The, the idea was to keep the character of a single family. So okay. there can be two doors in the front, but there could be sort of an uh, an entryway, portico, whatever, um, to go in to then lead to the other two doors. I know that's, but. Yeah. And also because it is not a do, um, duplex. Yes, duplex. I mean, I think that that was part of our concern was that if we weren't very clear about this, then we, the neighborhoods would change. The look of the neighborhood would change. Um, and we really were trying to be very mindful of not shifting the, that feel um, while still offering the opportunity for people to um, build out their homes. Um, so I think that that was where that came from. Now, you know, as a design concern, I think it's just a design requirement that somebody would have to to contend with. I doubt we'd have a enforcement issue. I don't, not a legal person, but um, that would just be a design constraint. I mean, huh? I don't have an issue looking at two door. Like I just, I think there is a layer of. Um, I'm trying to choose my words carefully. <laughs> oh, Emily, go for it. We're used I, to it. I, I just, I don't want it to become something snooty. where we're being putting snooty. people in a situation where it's impossible to build. Like it might just be easier for someone to have two entrances on the front. And either we're in support of ADUs or we're not. And we, you know, I think it's. Well, this is not for new construction. New construction would be a lot easier to do that. If you've got existing existing construction that you want to do an ADU, then yes. Um, But or it just happens to be easier. Yeah, there like that is a possibility. I don't know. It just. But I'll tell you, if if we do change that, that you can do that. I think we'll get more pushback from from doing that because then. Kathy, that was kind of what we, Kathy, is being and that's very why quiet. we did that. that. She's actually there. Hi, Kathy. I'm here. I'm <laughs> listening. I, you know, I, I don't want to change it because I really feel like we put a lot of thought into this already. And at past town meeting, we could end mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. creating a problem at town meeting. I, you know, I understand the thought behind what Mr. Cunningham is saying. On the other hand, I, you know, um, 
friend of mine down the street, you know her, Jenny, right, um, has two doors in the front, but it's it's in such a way that it looks like a single door. So there's a way of doing it without it, you know, being two separate entrances on the front of the building. Which is in the <clears throat> bylaw. Like right. it says that that's right. allowable. And and it doesn't mean to say that things couldn't change in the future because we do review, we will continue to review the bylaws every so often to keep up with, you know, what, what townspeople want. Right. It doesn't mean that it could never change, but obviously, you know, we, we do the bylaw, we do the best we can, put them in and then put it to the test. And if there are some things that need to change, then we go back to the drawing board. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we already talked about this same issue just three months ago, so mm -hmm. I'm not mm -hmm. feeling any differently so about it. Well, I think, too, the intent, you know, so what's the intent? The intent is to maintain single residential neighborhoods in that same appearance. And it's not discriminatory in any way. It's really um, structural and... Um, I, I wouldn't anticipate anybody engaging in the creation of an ADU to think that that bylaw is discriminatory in some fashion. As long as it's clear that this bylaw was to make it easier for people to get an ADU, <laughs> not to make it, right? Like, I feel like that's the, what I am reacting to is we did all of this work to make it more possible to have ADUs. Mm -hmm. There's a reaction that it feels like we're somehow making it harder for people. Yep. That's what I'm reacting to. Okay. All right. But so, I think it's, and I agree, we just got this passed. So right. <laughs> yes, I, th mm -hmm. I, th I think the consensus is we're clear that we will leave that alone at this point. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And the final one is that's not the final one, is it? The imaginary reference uh, line versus the yeah, the imaginary versus the reference line. I can change that. Yeah. Okay. And then the final one is uh, just the street line. Did we decide that too? Street line oh, versus right. the front line, which I think is very yeah, good, that, ca great yes. catch. Yeah. Well, because I think that uh, we have not been caught up out with that one, but mm -hmm. would take two seconds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let me see if I can make it clear that what we're measuring from is the right of way, the edge of the right of way, the legal right of way. I think that's the point. I, I don't know if people will have different interpretations of what street line means. Right. That's all. So let me see if I can get language that's uh, a little right. more precise. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not really clear exactly. I mean, I, I think it's it's from the cent the center of the line X amount of feet to the person's property line. Oh, gentleman here knows. I may. Yes, you may. <laughs> Please come to the. <laughs> you didn't know you were here for that. Yeah, so we, we can. I was <laughs> My name's Randy Iser. I'm a land surveyor. Okay. So All right, Randy. Ask away. <laughs> <laughs> the street line, right of way line, whatever you want to call it. If I was reading your bylaw, mm -hmm. if it said street line, it means one thing to me. And if it said right of way line, it would mean the same thing to me. So okay. either or. There, okay. There is no definite from the center line of a road, so many feet. There's no definite from the edge of the blacktop, so many feet. Okay. Every road is different. And every street line is treated can be treated differently. Okay. So if we had a subdivision that was done, built in town yesterday, more than likely the road would be pretty much in the center of the right of way. But all these old roads throughout this town and every other town th throughout the area, there's no guarantee that they're in the center of the road. And I'll, I'll bore you with something that may not you may not be interested in, but <laughs> we'll get old roads be that are not monumented and then, then we take the center line of the road and create the street line or the right of way line. So as long as you say street line or right of way line, you should be safe. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. You're welcome. Wow. What happened? So, uh, just so I um uh, clear. Um, so I'm I'm adding in that it says street line or right of way line. 
I don't, even, I don't even know if it's an or. I think it's a slash because I think it's t- okay. It's synonyms. Yeah, yeah that's right. one or the other. I think so. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay. That moves us closer to getting Randy's business son. I know. <laughs> All right. I... Lucky us that you showed up tonight. Anytime. <laughs> we have an extra Careful seat on the board. So that I can't do. I don't think I live in town. Oh, darn. Looking behind me. Okay. All right. So are we all set with? I think so. Are Any we... other comments from the planning board? I don't think so. I'm, I think we just all appreciate all the time uh, and energy that you've put into oh that into this working with us peggy yes. i mean obviously you've done the lion's share of the work and and we we so, seriously could not have done it without you well we're also yeah, really yeah. appreciative of your um patience and your concern with detail which yes uh, you've, you've been wonderful at blowing it out and then br- bringing it in and blowing it up and bringing it in and that's really helpful to us contextualizing yeah Contextualizing. So, yeah. Uh, definitely Okay, so so I think as far as the um, the informational hearing, I think we're done with that. And Peggy, if we need to chat or you, any changes, just let me know. And Amy, you'll be sending me Mr. Cunningham's comments on all of this tomorrow. Yeah. And, yes. And I will. Do, can you forward them on, them on to Peggy as well? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I plan to. Okay. Um, so just to just to recap, there were no changes to the conservation subdivision or the floodplain, so those are uh, pretty much ready to go. But I will make the changes based on the input and create a public hearing draft Perfect. of the Chapter One Seventy Nine changes with the based on the discussion tonight and the comments, yep. um, and then PDF that out, and then. Um, I'll also make the change in the PowerPoint and get that um, to Denise and Amy. Okay, wonderful. Anything Great. else that you can think of? I've sent the legal, a draft legal notice. So I think that's in Amy and Denise's hands. Yeah, I think Amy yeah. has that and that will be published on both the 18th and the 25th. Yeah, and the 25th, yes. Um, so I'm. do we need to take a vote to say that this is what, you know, these are the versions we're going to present or can we just do what we need to do and bring them to the hearing? Um, I don't think we need to vote on this. Okay. Okay. I'm asking Amy. Yeah, no, I'm, I I think we're fine because we'll go into the uh, public hearing with this and if there are any okay. other changes okay. comments that need to be incorporated, we will do that at that point before okay. we go to town meeting. Okay, sounds good. All right, great. Once again, thanks, Peggy. Thank Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Good night, everyone. Thanks. Okay. All right. So the public comment on this is over. And once again, thank you, Mr. Cunningham. You don't have to skulk out. (laughs) We really do appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you on October 2nd. Okay. Okay? All right. Great. All right. All right. Next on our agenda is A&R. the a r South Shelburne Road Assessors Met. This is yours? Okay. okay. All right. And did you write your name I and did. your... Thank you. You're welcome. That's right. Out. Okay. So let's see. Which one is it? I know. Uh, uh, I the one they're labeled. The pink labels at the end will tell you which one is which. Yeah, it's the one on your right hand. Oh, that one. <laughs> Randy recognizes his handiwork. Yeah. All right. Okay, so it's my understanding you're separating two lots. One is in Greenfield, one is in Deerfield, and the Deerfield one is no longer a building lot at this point. Due to your 60 degree (laughs) issue. Mm, Really? Yes. There's a, there's one of the boundary lines that is less than 60 degrees, so therefore it does not qualify as a building lot under your current bylaw. Okay. So, and the reason that we are doing what we're doing, the owners of that property a couple of years ago combined everything into one parcel. Mm -hmm. Now they want to sell their greenfield property. Okay. And by virtue of combining the two lots into one previously, even though they have 
two deeds, one for the Deerfield parcel, one for the Greenfield parcel. They combine them into one. Mm -hmm. So we have to uncombine them right. via the A&R process. So the plan has been to Greenfield and been signed oh, okay. by their board. Now I'm bringing it to you Excellent. for your board to sign. Okay. So obviously the people buying the property don't want to have property in Deerfield that at this point is not buildable and pay, to pay taxes on something. Correct. Okay. Got it. All right. I know that um, unfortunately Bob is not well, so he is not here tonight, but uh, this seems pretty straightforward. I don't anticipate any issues with this, especially, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I, when I spoke with Amy today, she wasn't sure whether we would have the Mylars by tonight, but I'm glad we Yeah, we have yeah. a losing hinge on this. <laughs> Um, and I, I did show Bob when this first came in, I did send him the electronic file. He's reviewed it. Um, he's familiar with it. He didn't have any issues. So I think we can say that we have his approval. No, it seems pretty straightforward. So how far off is it from being a building lot? I don't know. The people didn't want it. I mean, if I may approach. Yes, please. Yes. Approach the bench, Your Honors. <laughs> yes, you <laughs> This, let's see, where are we? There's a lot. Deerfield is over here. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the angle that's less than 60 degrees. Right. And if I wanted to make this a building lot, just so you know, yeah. all I had to do was take a line cut it off. and cut it right there. Mm -hmm. And then that would be less than or more than the 60 oh, degrees and this would have been a building lot. Yeah. The owners don't want it to be a building So it's really not, it's not that you couldn't have made it lot. Right. They, they, they just don't want it. Oh, okay. And, and so the way it's shown, I have to label on it where I don't have right. to. Right, it's I not. I choose to. Yeah. So that and nobody thinks we're trying to pull anything over on you. Right. That is not a not building right. lot. Not currently, as it is. All right. Well, I move that we endorse the ANR as presented for one... Two thirty one South Shelburne South Shelburne Road. I second it. Kathy Rachel Blaine. Sorry, all right. Kathy. All right. Um, all in favor? Kathy Sylvester. Um, yes. Kathy Witroba. Yes. Rachel Blaine. Yes. Emily Gaylord. Yes. Denise Mason. Yes. You're all set. We'll sign it right now so you can take it with you. Perfect. Thank no, you very much. Is the next one yours too? Yes. Okay. Oh, shoot. No. How many signatures do we need? We need four. Okay. And we only have three people here. Right. Well, well, maybe the fourth person could stop by tomorrow and sign it? Definitely, I can. You can? I can, too. I can step by. Okay. I could probably stop by tonight. I just didn't want to be in the meeting if I got a call. Right. Yes. I'll put you on call. Right, right, right. Um, the what, earlier the better. Excuse me? The earlier, earlier the, better. the better. Kathy, yes. can you stop by on the way to work? I can. I might even be able to run out tonight. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, so you may want to just call Amy tomorrow morning okay. and make sure it's signed so you don't make an unnecessary trip. Thank you. All right? Yes. Okay. We'll it's anyway. almost a perfect night. Um, I know. Sorry. That's okay. What, yeah. what time does the office open? What time does the town hall open? Town Hall opens at 9. There's somebody there at 8, you know, if you want to call in. I usually get there about 8.15, 8.20. Okay. You leave it in the foyer. You can leave it in the foyer. And you can... I'm gonna, uh, yeah, oh, there's, uh, I don't know. Do we want to do that? Yes. I can I can either get there in the morning or I'll, I'll just run out of here quick. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks. I'm going to sign it now, too. Great. All right, so I think we are all set with this. We'll have one more signature and you'll be good to go tomorrow. Okay, great. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for coming and thanks for, thanks for your help. Any place at any time. As long as we. I don't mind that I'll get it. Spend a lot of time doing something with any work, but I'm more than willing. Or you you are in, you do live in Sunderland. Pardon? You live in Sunderland. No. Oh, okay. you're just helpful to Sunderland. Yeah.
but I don't think they really did leave that in the order. Just like, no, 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 no. But I was a great idea. He's in the car too. So. Yeah, right. Um, so Amy, we're going to leave this here and then you'll have this tomorrow morning. Yep. And Kathy or Kathy will tell us if they're going to come out earlier. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you. Rachel. Well, I might as well wait till morning if he's not there to pick it up. So tonight. Uh, well, if you get him now, if he's here, he'll wait. I I can run down. It's just I I can't leave the meeting. I have to wait till the meeting's over. <laughs> Let's go quick. We don't have enough more. Well, no, we we still have a quorum with Kathy Watroba. So if you want to run down, you can or I can run out. Kathy, I'm probably closer. I can just run there quick. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I don't uh, fight you for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So Kathy's on her way. All right. She's like, All right. you have a lot of class here tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have another, it looks like we have our next ANR. Mm -hmm. And that is ANR 89 Waitley Road Assessor's Map 167, Lot 8. And all right. I don't want to mispronounce your name. Stanley Rakevitz. Rakevitz. Oh, thank you. Well, I know I can see it. I just can't pronounce it. But thank oh. you. <laughs> huh. Yeah, yeah, I did growing up in South Turkish. I know. You're pretty I'm good sorry. at the Rakevitz. Uh... Okay. Would you like to talk about what your plan is? Uh, you want me to explain? Yes, sure. Yeah. The, um, the farm, the farm is um, is two properties. One is 107 Waitley Road. The other is 89. And it turned out that 89 Waitley Road, uh, the deed is essentially half the property. It's it's roughly 45, 50 acres. And um, we're, we're that, that 80, 89 Waitley Road is a rental rental property. And um, I want to get out of being a landlord and my siblings want to get out. So we want to sell just that 89 Waitley Road property and we want to truncate most of the land off of that off of that 89 rental and transfer it onto the 107 property because we don't want to sell half the farm with with just a little bungalow house. So we're, we're just trying to give bare minimum. You know, the, 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 the frontage is more than the minimum the way the the way the property is. So we just want to sell, you know, sell that lot that with that, that property with with the minimum size lot that meets the guidelines of the town. Okay. Excuse mm -hmm. Any Amy? Any comments from Bob that you know of? No, Bob. Bob said it was fine. Um, it's pretty cut and dry. You know, the the property it uh, meets requirements. Yep. So I move that we endorse the ANR as presented for 89 Waitley Road. Rachel Blaine. Second. Emily Gaylord seconds. <laughs> okay. Kathy Sylvester. Yes. Rachel Blaine. Yes. Emily Gaylord. Yes. Denise Mason. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. That Rakevitz. was easy. That was straightforward. And Thank we'll, you very much. Have a good evening. We'll, we'll sign this so you Thank can you. come down and, and get them. Okay. I'll be up. Um, I live out in Natick, so I'll, I'll either send one of my siblings or I'll drop by sometime next week. Okay. And and Amy will have them for you. Amy, okay. Yep. Very well. Thank you. Great. Yep. Thanks so much. I just think you could cut All it out. Right. So let's see, what else do we have here? That's great, because then if Kathy's here, we can sign both. Get her, get yes. Her yeah. yeah, actually. That'd be great. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, so we don't really have, okay, are there any reports as we move on? Local Cultural Council grants are open. If anyone knows anyone who'd like to apply, we're meeting Thursday. Mm -hmm to um, talk about our communications plan around it, but people are able to apply for grants on the Mass Cultural Council website. What has been your biggest success as Emily, Mass Cultural Council? 
Oh, what has been like? That was quick. Do you, do you know what I think is our biggest success actually? What? The um, number of applications over the last couple of years have, have almost like have been like exponentially increasing. So it went from like 12 to 25 to 40 something to like 50 something. Mm -hmm. So it just shows that Deerfield has like momentum no, that's for great. the arts and culture. Well, and I remember because I was on the cultural council years ago and we used to have, you know, three different, we wanted to make sure that we had stuff for the students and also stuff, you know, events for older. Yeah, we're prioritizing intergenerational yes, events. Yes, perfect. Yep. That's great. So very exciting. Um, and we'll see what projects come in. Good. Well, thank you for being on that. Okay, while we're doing this, I'm just going to report um, Thursday night, September 14th. It's this Thursday at 6 p.m. And this is in person only at Town Hall. And this is, we have, um, it's public meeting number two, Deerfield Municipal oh. Campus Vision Plan. And we have VHB that we've been working with, um, senior housing working with to come up with, oh, I'll just read it, the town of Deerfield in partnership with Mass Housing Partnership, MHP and VHB is exploring the community's collective vision for Deerfield's municipal campus. At this meeting, the second of two public events, residents will be presented with high level concepts for future development and ask for feedback on the campus trajectory. So I think it'll be a very lively meeting. We'll have a lot of visuals and people can put sticky notes as to what they like or what they dislike. So we really encourage people to come out and give us a lot of comment on this. So, and we do have these in, um, in the entryway, it's online. And um, I think it's been posted on Deerfield now numerous times. Thank you, Kathy, for coming. Okay. And we just have to sign this. All right. Any other any other comments? Do we need to review the mail at all? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's really nice that other neighboring towns do send us mail. And so I don't think it's anything that is life changing. Like yes, <laughs> not for us, but I think I think it's it's really important that we get that. And thank you so much for I attending. Was, I want to. If I may say, I appreciate your process for doing the other day in ours. There's plenty of boards out there that would have spent a half an hour or more discussing these things, and they're when they're cut and dry, they're cut and dry. <laughs> well, we're very lucky to have a building commissioner who actually really gives us. Yeah. His uh, state yes. feedback, which we have. Yeah, whatever is yes. responsible for the process, you are all involved, and I do appreciate it. Thank you. Well, thank I you. I like that you brought your own trash bag. Yeah. Yeah. Very, right. uh, thinking ahead. <laughs> I wouldn't be yeah, I would give that to so you. So true. So true. <laughs> okay, I need to say yes. <laughs> I have one nice thing to bring to attention because I thought that it was really interesting. Emily is a Amherst former, but Amherst. I'm sorry, have we voted to adjourn? I, hold on, I, I want to just say something publicly. So oh, that, okay, I'm sorry. That um, okay. the Amherst, we've been really, um, we, we, I took my ethics test, yeah. but Amherst school committee got into big trouble. And I think it's the kind of trouble that is so easy to get into once you get kind of excited and going. And um, But it reminds us how, how important we need to be about our communication with one another, but just in general, our communication and talk about it. That was really uh, eye-opening. The Amherst School Committee had a member of it, the committee, who wrote basically information that, I mean, she wrote what she thought should happen at the meeting in an email, and it caused a, a huge hole in their open meeting. Oh, it, it was a big deal. And I, I just think it's a good reminder because that open meeting law is so important. And... Um, and it was complicated for the, they of course had other issues. But. I didn't know which issue you were going to bring up. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Amherst. Quite a few. Well, I just thought about it in terms of open meeting procedures. That's really important that we are, we are having our conversations here publicly so that mm -hmm. we are. Um, yes. Anyway, that was all I was going to say. And so I would move to adjourn. Oh, second. And, uh, that's Rachel Blaine moving yeah, to adjourn. I, I thought Emily Gaylord, yeah. Kathy Watroba, adjourn. Yes.
She may not be home yet. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kathy Sylvester. Yes. Denise Mason, yes. Bridge I Blaine, think. yes. Emily okay. Gaylord, yes. Okay. I think we can adjourn.